Let's have put that down there. So I'll tell Jim we're going to put the emergency director under the uh, uh, forum for speaking yep. for the public. Right out the gate, number one. You guys? He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Yeah. 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 6.29. Alright, we're good to go. Oh, yeah. Alright, we're going to call this meeting to order at 6.29 p.m. Um, Seven roll call. Mark? Here. Here. Yep. Tim? Yep. Jim? Here's. He said here. Ellen? <laughs> here. Ellen? Here. Okay, so I guess we can get the approval of minutes quick before we go to we gotta to go to public forum right away or motion approved. Second. Okay. All right. That's for the agenda, correct? All right, yeah. <sighs> Becky, do you have any forthcoming events? Um are you Oh, no. Yeah. Well, yeah, we are. We're going to do the public forum. Yeah, motion approved the agenda. Approved the agenda. Yeah, I second did. it. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Negative? Nobody? Okay. Approved. All right, then we're going to go to public forum. That is you, our emergency uh, government director. Yeah, so I'm Al Lucini. I'm the emergency management director for Washera County. I, uh, I'm here to talk about your outdoor weather center, and I believe there were some, were there some questions about yes. the, the outdoor weather center. The need and the continued service, Yeah, the need to have a service contract. So, so maintenance on those um, devices can be costly to municipalities. Um, I believe it's important for, for municipalities to have several ways to get notifications, and outdoor weather center is one of them. Uh, however, there are many municipalities that are getting rid of them once they come to term and they don't want to pay the maintenance costs anymore on them. Um, is that to me? Tell Jim we're talking to the emergency director. Oh, okay. Um, so I, I think that it would be up to the board, obviously, to make that decision on to remove it or not if it's if it's working. Uh, studies have shown that in a, a weather emergency with the wind, the rain, you're down to a mile or less that you can actually hear the siren anyways. Uh, so in the rural areas, especially on the countries, out in the country, it, uh, it doesn't get very far, but you know, in a village or city, even around a lake, it could be a little bit more useful than it, than it would be out in the country. So I guess I don't know the location of your outdoor weather siren, but um, that would be up to you guys um, whether you want to continue that or not. Again, we're pushing Hyper Reach is our new um, county-wide emergency emergency uh, notification system and weather radios and news and cell phone alerts. I mean, with all those, it seems to be that people are pretty well informed without the outdoor weather well, center. Are you still doing landline? Yeah, so that would be over our yeah, okay. emergency alert notification. So, How many other municipalities around here have went away from it? So there hasn't been any yet. I know that everybody has been talking that the next time that there's a problem, we're not going to we're not going to get it fixed. There has not been any yet. Well, can I explain to them how that if a weather alert comes in, how how it gets out to people, how you determine it gets out to the how the siren is activated, how you use code red and, yep. and cell phone and so on and so forth. Yeah, so the so when an alert comes in, it comes across the fax machine at uh, the Sheriff County Dispatch, and, and or they call them on the radio, and then they call myself, and then I usually call the Lieutenant of Communications, and then they manually push a button. So that could be three to four minutes typically before that button gets pushed anyways. Sometimes in a fast moving storm, the storm is already out of the location that they said it was in. So that can be um, cumbersome. It takes time to do that. You know, if everybody answers the phone at the right time, and I guess it can be quick, but otherwise it takes a little bit to do that. So it's it's literally manually, somebody has to push a button for that siren to go off. It does, it's not an automatic thing. Okay, Um. as far as activating, I know the Weather Service can only issue tornado warnings, correct? 
And severe thunderstorm and warning. And severe thunderstorm warning. So what can we issue as far as weather? Just so we, we, we push it out. Um, it depends on what you sign up for for our mass notification system. If you sign up on the system and you want you want watches as well, we can push out watches, uh, winter storm watches, winter storm warnings. We don't have a lot of floods around here, but if we ever issued into a flood watch or warning, we would do that. Um, and then and all the warnings, your tornado warnings, your winter storm warning, your severe weather warning, maybe it's a winter storm warning, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, it's a thunderstorm warning. Those would all go off. So I guess it depends on what you sign up for. And then as far as a village, you can you can put out any notification that you'd like. I don't know if you have a, a, a or do you use the counties probably? I, I'd imagine you use the counties. That's through the county, yeah. Yeah. You guys have control of that. Yeah. yeah. So, so we, It'd be whatever you guys wish to do, we would honor that. So, so we could, a uh, uh, police officer could call in and say, Absolutely. or we have to wait for the weather service to notify. No, them. no, uh, Chief Tower or, or Chief Piaski for the fire department, they both could could call a shot to say, I want the sirens to go off, or I want, you know, they have that authority to do that. Or we can get the notification on the phone. And yeah, they can say, yeah, can you push out a notification and we would do the same. Well, then I don't see any need for that sir. Yeah. yeah, we'll have to put it on the next board then. Because we, yeah, we had a tornado blow through when I was younger, and I never heard a siren anyway. And I live right down the street, so. Yeah, there's, with the heavy rain and the winds, I mean, it is tough to hear. That's that's the, the unless you live right next to the siren. It, well, it, it was a top twister. It twisted okay. off all the trees. Then it touched down, but the right. wind just blew me right back when I went by the window and just. Right. And the same thing, too, is that sirens power away electricity. And for some reason, the backup, battery backup isn't working. Um, they can set the phones off and melt the electricity to power the siren here off the pier. Correct. Yeah, so I... I yeah, do we want to put that on the next month's board? Yes. Consider act on that. Anybody have any questions for the director? Well, thank you for the information. Thank you, yeah. thank you for thank all you for showing do. up. Yeah. All right. I Thanks. told you it wasn't going to take long. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Al. Thank yeah. you. <clears throat> okay. Now we can go to reports, Becky. <clears throat> yeah. No, you skipped the minutes. Yeah. Oh, they skipped the minutes? Motion oh. to approve the minutes. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion approved. Okay, now we can go to reports. <laughs> now I can see. Okay, I have a couple things. Um, Gina and I had our first paper to wait audit by ourselves. Uh, and that was February 19th through the 21st. Um, they gave us high marks. We had what they wanted, so that was good. Um, Brent also said that the uh, flushing of the hydrants is probably going to be the first week in April. Jim, did he tell you that? Too? It's on his calendar. Okay. So that should be coming up. So we'll put um, notifications up. And then we received a letter from the individual that um, was involved with the signs here at the mobile home park. Uh, he said, Dear Village of Red Granite, I am writing to apologize for my involvement in the destruction in the two street signs. I am sorry for putting others in danger by removing the signs. I do, <coughs> excuse me, I do plan to pay full restitution as soon as I am able. I am a high school student and I have faced some hard lessons from this mistake. I will use this as a reminder to make smart choices. Kyle, you really made an impact. Well, it wasn't me. What happened was, if you recall, maybe about a year ago, there was damage done at uh, Mount Morris Park. Yep. They smashed all the toilets and urinals and kind of went on a spree, damaged a bunch of mailboxes. One of the um, we were one of the victims in that crime where they stole the street sign off the Courtney Lane. So uh, there are numerous uh, young people that were uh, either charged criminally or adjudicated delinquent with that. And they have a nice chunk of restitution that they have to pay back to the various municipalities. 
Jim did replace the sign and we did forward the bill to the witness coordinator for circuit court. And so we should be getting restitution for the cost of the sign, his time, tools, and a bracket, a new bracket. So there again, justice prevails. We are made whole again. So we have a brand new sign and brackets and that's the way it should be. So hopefully they learned their lesson. Excellent. Don? Does Jim have anything he wants to discuss for future stuff? Jim, you have anything for the board? Hold on a second. Can you hear me, Dylan? Yes. Right this minute, no. Okay, nothing. All right, we're going to move on to finance, personnel, and insurance. Dylan, what you got for us? Okay, approval bills. So, motion to approve check number 14865 through 14900 in the amount of $166,568.84 for the general fund. The water fund is going to be checked 6205896 through 6205909 in the amount of $9,280.33. The sewer fund checks 6306677 through 6306694 in the amount of $11,785.50. Um, <clears throat> then payroll at checks 321 through 371 and 336 through 374 in the amount of $25,833.32 for a grand total of $236,377.61. Second. On the motion to approve payment. Who first did it? I, I did the motion. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passed. Uh, so then we got to consider act on approval to reverse the down payment for the fire truck from the ARPA funds. Um, this plays into number three as well. Um, Basically, we decided to not pay through ARPA, and we're going to borrow a hundred thousand from the sewer funds and pay the down payment out of that, and put the rest in savings to cure interest till the final payment is due. So, uh, motion to approve the reversal of the down payment for the fire truck from ARPA funds. Second. So All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion passed. So then the second part of that is consider act on approval of borrowing 100,000 from the sewer funds for the fire truck. Uh, like I said before, we're going to make the down payment to 20 some thousand, um, put the rest in savings until that final payment is due so it could build interest over time. So a motion to approve borrowing 100,000 from the sewer fund. Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion passed. Library. Jeannie McBeth, monthly update. Okay, a lot's going on there. Um, as of the end of February, we're number one in search increase out of all 32 member libraries. Our search increase is 47%. That's competing against our same hours last year. So when I stood here last year, I said it would be hard to compete. You know, the challenge would be to beat us from increase of hours. And we've done that again, 47% number one in the library system. And I March already feeling the same way. And a lot of it is due to our programming and our outreach activities that we're trying to do. Uh, we had a lavender program that had 20 people. We had a compost program that had 17 people. Um, the word is afterwards, the feedback, people are really liking our Saturday programs. So we're gearing a lot of our programs now towards our adults because that's what our survey and our experience has been. We have more success in our adult programming, and those are your taxpayers, than our kid programming. Uh, however, we're still doing the same amount. We still have our story time, we still have our kid programming. We just increased our adult programming and teen programming. So our foot traffic is up 67% from last year. Libby, which is the online, Digital books and audio is up 38% so far from last year. Um, our reading program is up 42% from last year. Again, these are working in St. Wow. That's just where we are. Um, let's see. Our story walk 
displays will be done on Friday, so we need to meet with Parks and whoever else um, so we can finalize where those will be around the quarry. We're also going to do some story walks around in Lauraville and some of the other townships should they would show interest so we have some extra built. Um, I'm going to have to find storage for them next fall, <laughs> but I think I have some place for that. Um, so that's very exciting. That's coming out of the Lucille Clark, but we're putting it into the story walk so that we go with collaboration of the, the spirit of making the quarry more of a family uh, kind of thing for people in our community and not just a swimming pool for illegal activities or whatever it is that they do. Um, so that's kind of what's going on. We have more programs starting in April, towards the end, and in May. And we have a bird program, bluebird program. I think there's a couple spots open for that on April 6th. So that's kind of what's going on there. Okay. Uh, most of the people showing up on the weekends, and people that work during the week? I'm sorry? Most of the people that show up on the weekends for classes, are they workers during the week? Most or? of the people who are showing up are retired. <laughs> okay. So, but good. yeah, some of them do. Um, our <clears throat> evening classes haven't really been very successful. We're only open until six. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we can try some in the future, but I don't. I don't know. Five to <clears throat> six, I service a, a few people, um, but mainly I'm just trying to clean up from being busy all day. So. Well, we're still gonna tell you'll be busy. Okay. okay well, we'll consider an actor. On approval of library annual report. So I don't know if you got a copy of the annual report. Mm -hmm. It is on okay. It is on our website. We have 2021, 2022, 2023, mm -hmm. all PDFs for everyone to view and look at. What you will see is we have a huge increase in our total hours open from 2021, which was 736. 2023, we're open 2,296 hours. Um, our number of programs in 2022, when I was just starting the program and get things started, and also this time last year, we didn't do a huge amount of programming because I kind of broke the library and broke the desk, our service area, so we could make some more public space. So that was a lot of work internally that we did that a lot of people didn't notice. We're still struggling with our small workspace, but we're happy with our public works. You know, every little inch makes a difference as far as the public space because our programming, we wanted to have more that we have to limit because we can't have very many people in the library. So I have to actually turn people away right now, which is sad. So, um, but anyway, uh, our programming is up 75% from last year overall. So, And that's not just internal. We are doing home delivery for people who are can't make it to the library or are homebound. So we do home delivery services. We're going out to Preston Place. We have a computer now that will do CERC right there as we go and we have a full service library kind of remotely. And I just took what I did from the bookmobile program that I ran years ago and kind of instituted that here. So we have a lot of off, out of building library services that we're doing. Okay. <coughs> so I need to motion to approve the library annual, annual report. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passed. Discuss, consider, act on approving the library's community market to be held at Veterans Park on Saturdays from May to October of 2024. I think one of the clauses we had in there was if there was another event going on, it was going to be at the library then, or? It could, or could we have perhaps share? Cool, cool. Yeah. You have that? Okay. Because it would be more foot traffic for everyone. I think it would be a, a win-win situation. I think it'll be a lot better too with parking and bringing people in just because you got more space over there with the parking lot the way it right. is at the library. Plus, so. if, if if there is another event scheduled on Saturday, that maybe they could just keep everything out of the shelter house and leave that shelter house available to whoever's renting the park that yes. day. Yes. And yeah. every event, family event, you know, they only have like two or three right. picnic tables out of the whole yeah. thing. So 
Um, I think it, in the spirit of working together in the community, I don't think anyone would have. Yeah, you guys have your events on Saturday, right? Chicken? No, it's a Monday. It's a Monday? Yeah, Memorial Day. It's always a Monday. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. well, the, the daycare usually has something on a Saturday, so you, you, and we you would, would probably have them. to move over to the library. Yeah, the and we could, or we would work with them together because we work with them now with stuff. So, so I would say a motion to approve uh, community market being held at Veterans Park on Saturdays. Obviously, if there's another event, we would have to coordinate properly. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Thank you. Okay, um, Jeannie, this number four one. That's just a typo. Okay. Yeah, that was supposed to be done somewhere else, right? It's All right. Thank you for your time. East Side Park, wasn't it? No. No, that's it. It's under oh. library. Yeah. Okay, we're going to move on to machinery, garbage, and ordinances. Gary and Ellen, monthly update. Uh, yeah, the monthly update, Jim. Uh, not for machinery, well, for machinery, um, as you see, they come in, our new mower, mower is here. So, um, my plan with that mower being a commercial, I, I, my plan of good maintenance is uh, 10 years for that mower. Um, if that was a residential, we'd be lucky if we got six out of it. Yeah. So, so I'm pushing for 10, for 10 years out of it with the right maintenance. There's no reason why I can't make it that, that long. With mine, I found the solenoid goes out quite regularly, so that might be something to look into. I don't know if you looked at any reviews on them. I had a commercial one like that, and that's what just kept going out, was that starter solenoid? Um, I have one at home. It's a big one like that at home, and so far I haven't had any problems. Right. But solenoid, that's, that's cheap. Yeah, yeah. That's Are we gonna have uh, like belts, blades on hand? Um, right now, I just got an extra set of blades right away. I was there, and it was $105, so I am going to look um, on Amazon and stuff to get my blades there. And what I found so far is about ten to fifteen dollars cheaper for the same blade. Okay, that and filters and get the filters right. Yeah, okay. I already got it. So, okay. All right, great. And that's all I have for the time for machine and garbage. All right, thank you, Jim. You're welcome. Uh, number two, consider act on setting dates for spring cleanup. This has been tabled from the February meeting. Okay. Uh, leap pickup, I have scheduled for April 22nd to May 3rd. That's two weeks. Okay. Yeah, yeah for leap because, you know, yeah. this takes some while. And uh, bulk? Yeah. No, well, everything has to be paid. Oh, no, I'm talking about, you said for the leap pickup what you had, but what, do you have dates for the bulk pickup? Or are you going to yep, do that? Um, yep, I'll get to them. Brush pickup is May 13th to May 17th. That's one week. That's plenty for, otherwise you just keep setting it all. <laughs> May 13th to May 17th. All right, motion to approve those dates. Oh, I got one more, yeah, one more. Sorry. That's okay. Jump the gun. I know it. Large item pickup is June 3rd to June 7th, through June 7th. Do you take kids too or no? If they're in the chair, yeah. <laughs> uh, can, when you put that up, can we get a general rundown of what you're willing to pick up? Um, well, just so you know, at least everybody knows, make sure that when it's posted on the website that leaves have to be, have to be bagged. And that brush has to be parallel with the road because we use a grappler now. So we can just come off the road and pick it up. So um, brush needs to be parallel with the road. And large item, um, of course, it can't be TVs, any electronics. That has to go for the county. So if they ask for electronics and stuff, have to go like computers, TVs, things like that, microwaves, that, then they have to contact the highway department. Okay, and what about vehicles there for drop off? Um, couch, refrigerator. Uh, not refrigerators, but couches and table, wooden tables, anything wooden. Okay. Or couches or mattresses. I know the dumps that anything that's metal you can just bring it right out there. So, yeah, well, appliances. Um, well, we pick up metal too, and then we have a metal pile. No, no appliances. No. So we're working on ordinance violations right now. So we will, when we send the warnings out, we will also put a copy of that in with the warnings. 
for people to let them know um, can we get your stuff out to the curb on these dates and if you miss it then it's on you to if you don't put it out to the curb you wait till july it's on you to clean the mess up that's smart hey jim yes i do see you said you were doing metal pickup as well was that underneath the bulk pickup or they can they can yeah they, they lay some metal up then we just make a pile and we have uh henry come out and get it okay that's all but we won't take like uh auto parts like hoods or snowmobile hoods things like that no okay. auto parts i make a motion to approve jim dates for the uh the spring cleanup pickups second all those in favor aye, aye. aye. all those opposed motion passed Jim, what all right paint number three paint. what what about paint cans no what paint cans all right, number three, consider act on approving an ordinance pertaining to the community gardens. I think this is just to start the ordinance, right? Because we don't have one in place yet. Well, here's what I found on that. So okay. I researched like basically all over the state, people who have community, or villages, cities that have community gardens, no one really has an ordinance. People have rules, guard, community garden rules and regulations. And I am going to, I already, um, I'm basing one off of Milton's, which I like, but a few changes, which I haven't retyped yet. But I would like to just do this um, and maybe get it approved at like our next um, ordinance meeting. April 9th. Okay. Yeah. And then along with this is um, like a registration form, which I really like that they have to sign that they say they agree to abide by and we are not liable and things like that. And um, yeah, this is a really nice form. So I'll have everything all rewritten. You guys can go over it at the ordinance meeting and see if you like it. So and, um, table, table list to the next ordinance meeting. covers the bases. Table okay. for Thank you, Mike. Yep. All right, thank you. And Jim, you, you also, did you want us to discuss that now, the length of those boxes? I think we have that down here, don't we? In part of that further down. We are not, it could be yeah, long. Or from the yeah. Yeah. Let's discuss it down there. Okay. Okay. All right. That's all for me. Okay. Municipal buildings. Me. Consider act on approval of invoice from Sheet Metal Services in the amount of eighteen twenty eight for furnace maintenance at the library and village clerk's office. What happened there is that there's zones uh, set up in this building, so each room has a zone, and the motors that switch over in the ductwork, the heat, you know, the, where it sends the heat, they go out. And that's, I think, the third one that we replaced, and that's the last one I think we haven't replaced. And then I also had the uh, furnace has never been checked at the library, so I had to go through all that. So everything here has been checked on my watch so far and is up to snuff, so we know where we're at. So this should be it, unless we have something that goes down. So motion approved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passed. Parks and Cemetery, Ellen and Gary. Monthly update. Um, in the in the uh, cemetery, uh, Mike and I discussed, and I don't know, if we discussed it last meeting, but he, he mentioned that uh, we have to move the road over because there's lot that were the old road where people just started driving. As for there's sold lots, and there's actually a couple of. Uh, um, flat stones there now, or whatever you want to call them, graves. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I talked to the county, and I need them to come in and just cut, cut with a grader, just the road, and then I'll put in some, uh, I'll do the limestone and grade it all myself. But I need to have something cut in so we have, you know, um, so it's a definite road. You know, I just don't want to lay it on top of what's there now. They'll like, just cut it in probably for or five inches and then I'll fill it in and I'll just, you know, slow it down. The they side. do the whole loop? Just from where, that new road that we have to cut in, okay. that we have to make now from the old one. We're off the fence that also people will drive over to, <coughs> over to um, graves, I guess, that don't have headstones on them. So do we need to, that makes sense. Do we need to add that to next month for approval or <coughs> is that already good? To uh, we can do that. Okay. Um, I don't, I don't, it'll be below a hundred, uh, below a thousand dollars, so I don't know. I shouldn't have to have it approved then, no. Okay. So I'm, not, I'm sure it'll be under a thousand easily. It won't even be that because it'll only take them an hour and you'll be out of there. So at $150 an hour. 
discuss, consider, act on approving construction of 22 raised beds for the community garden at Eastside Park, amount not to exceed $5,000 from ARPA funds. Now you all walk by the, uh, the box, that prototype, that box is 10 feet long. Do you want to have that 12 feet or do you want it 10 feet? Because tomorrow the guys are going to get all the lumber that we need to build these boxes. I, I think that 10 feet is plenty. I'll leave that up to you because I'll do whatever you decide is the best. I think they look great. Yeah, yeah I, I, I do, think do too. That's a, that's a lovely amount for what's being gotten for. If we go to 12 feet, they might get what, two extra plants in there? Mm, yeah. Maybe yeah, the space if that. Yeah. So I think that 10 foot is looking good. So I agree. Long. Okay, so you all agree, so I'll, I'll have, I'll make them all 10 feet, just like that. Okay. And they're 18 inches tall, so that, that's from what I read, is where you, it's so that people can sit on the side, yeah. is this the right height? And, and we are gonna take, we got a big pile of wood chips that have been out there for probably six years or whatever, and we're gonna fill in, there. so we'll probably put in 10 inches of wood, or uh, eight inches of wood chips, and then uh, the rest of uh, topsoil. Because they want that so when it rots, it, it makes compost for yeah. the soil. Is that topsoil out there at the dump where you're putting a brush? Is that okay? No, we got to get. I just wonder if it's like contaminated. I get, like I get for the parks when I get topsoil. Yeah, okay. yeah like, no, this stuff we have around here, yeah, we won't even, we'll even grow weeds. So and we're going to get some compost. Uh, Julie brought it up too. We're going to. Get a load of compost also, and we'll probably mix it one cotton post with two topsoil. Do you think any local farmers would donate some manure? Really? You want that there? You have more complaints? <laughs> oh, if you mix it in. That's how we always did it. Old before. stuff don't stink. What's that? Old manure does not stink. Oh. I got houses blocking me from there. Well, I don't for two bucks a bag, you can buy. Yeah. You can buy cotton manure. And that's, and basically that's up to the people. You know, they'll have to fertilize that they want to add more than yeah. what we do to it. You the know. compost we're looking at is can be picked up in bulk, and I have to get a price yet, but it's really good stuff. There actually is a manure in it. There's like worm castings and just like, it's really, it's well, good stuff. And I think because it's can be picked up in bulk, it'll give it them right away. We're talking 60 cubic feet per box. Is that what it is? So, yeah, did you, uh, with the, uh, is that with the chips? Well, the full size of the box is 60 cubic feet. Okay. So half that, because he's going to do half of it with chips. Chips. Yeah. Which Put is smart about the bottom so. You don't dig down that deep to plant plants, so that's a really good idea. No, you kind of want anywhere from 10, 10 to a foot of topsoil. Yeah. Is about what you want in that area. So. so, but the people, I mean, once we get that, I mean, of course, every year, anybody <coughs> that gardens knows you got to fertilize, so it's on them. All right. Have you and then also, um, I, did you want, are you going to talk about um, the price of the rental? Uh, we didn't get that in there. Yeah, Can if we we're going to supply anything? water, we got to get more than 20 bucks. Well, I think that's something we, yeah, we got to discuss. I know we kind of had an idea, Okay. but like I, I think it, we were talking $20 for the year and then a $20 security deposit. If they don't clean it up, yeah. Correct. And all they have to do is clean out the box and just put it to the side, and we'll come with a tractor and bucket and just fork it in there. Yeah, that would all be in the agreement. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I didn't. I, I know we talked about. It. I, I think it was at the at the just the strictly board meeting. Yeah. Okay. We got to decide. Right. For we have to add that into this, or we. we Did can't. you want to table it until next next? Well, we can do that at the ordinance meeting too. Okay. Want, because then I would really have it all. Yeah, we can add it into that. Perfect. Yeah. All right. So motion to approve the construction of the twenty-two boxes. I can. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All those opposed? Ten feet long then. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. At ten feet long. All right. That that'll happen then. I just ordered eighty feet, eighty more feet of uh, angle iron. So. Consider act on placement of a camera at the quarry. No, this would be the new one. For the parking lot. This is the first I'd heard of it. No, it's the Kyle. This is the one for the. Which oh, the video camera? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to put it up on the point up here. Trailer. So we're going to need concrete and gravel. 
and possibly some fencing. Why don't we pick a day where we can go up there, kind of position, see what we got, and make a list of what we need. Okay. I like that. Table it till the next meeting? Yeah. Uh, you just want to let us know when you got some time and we can just meet you there? It's not like I got to go far or Tim has to go far. Yeah, before it snows out again. Yeah. And Gary and I are too far away either. Consider act on cost and funding of adding Frisbee Golf in Willow Creek Park. I thought we already approved this. No, we tabled it from the okay. meeting from February. Oh, that's your video. No, it, it, no it's your video. Well, Jim's well, having someone come out and look at like the feasibility of it mm -hmm. and how many holes they could make out there. Uh, like some guy that kind of designed design some, some yeah. hopefully for free. Um, so. So I think that can be tabled until the next meeting and he'll have a lot more information. Yeah, we're going to have to find out the square footage of what you need for these holes. So. Yeah. So I think that can help with somebody that we don't want. So we'll table that. Totally Consider yeah. act on approval of the $1,400 quote for stump removal at Eastside Park, Corn Street, and Packery Street. We have all those stumps left from a couple of years we've been cutting and just never, never got to them to get them drowned out. So it's Eastside Park and then a couple of streets that we cut down trees and they're just, you know, ice stores. So. You're just going to, if I remember correctly, you said you're just going to stack them and burn them as you can so that way they just don't all sit. These will be ground on oh, ground. I felt it will, and I didn't get it on agenda. That was totally my fault. When we talked at the meeting, I I assumed that Jim did it, and I, it was me. I just blanked out. So um, that what we were talking about before is going to get pulled out. All right, and then with that, but these here in the parks like that, we don't have them leave from. Okay. Now that's the motion to approve. Motion to approve. That that motion to approve. Definitely stump removal. Affordable. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. We're going to save that mulch? <laughs> you can get all the mulch you want, just let me know. Yeah, it's going to my garden. And chip it. <laughs> oh, police and fire. Oh. It's on you. Yeah. <laughs> Monthly update from our granted area fire district. Well, we didn't have a meeting last month, and ours is going to be coming up here shortly, so. Nothing new. They're still looking for donations to equip the uh, new fire truck, so anybody has any money they'd like to send them, they'd appreciate it. Uh, moving on to number two, a monthly update from <coughs> Chief Tar on the police department. Well, we've been very busy protecting and serving the citizens of the village. <laughs> <coughs> we've made uh, numerous contacts with people um, advising them of the traffic laws and uh, issuing some warnings and some citations. <coughs> um, <coughs> we did execute two search warrants last month. Uh, was all from a domestic abuse situation in which drugs and firearms were involved. Um, we have the lengthy court case coming up with that, but uh, that took up a lot of time to, to write the search warrant, execute the search warrant, and return everything back. Uh, Bria has been very busy out at the prison. Um, we had a we call a mega fight with uh, numerous inmates at the institution, and. Uh, there was a John Doe hearing coming for that, so when that is scheduled, um, she's going to be basically not available to me for that whole court time because she's going to have to be up at the courthouse. So. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we attended the uh, Wisconsin uh, Chiefs of Police Association meeting beginning of February. Um, a lot of good topics. Um, I'm not going to those anymore for the simple fact is time, time is winding down and it's not really necessary for me to go there. Um, I did learn a lot when I used to go to those uh, networking with other uh, chiefs and other law enforcement officials, yeah, federal, state law enforcement officials. Um, you get to know those people, how they can help you, um, and if they don't know where to get help, they'll find somewhere to get you help. Um, we get a lot of ideas from the Chiefs Network as far as we're having this problem. I put it out there in the Chiefs Network and I get all sorts of ordinances, ideas from other departments. Um, meeting vendors that we buy things from. I sent her specifically down there to gather information on body-worn cameras. Um, gathered probably about a dozen different vendors and went through the different uh, policies and the different uh, packages that we could uh, 
purchased body worn cameras for and came out with a collection. So, you know, that took some time to go through that and thoroughly vet all that information. We've been busy with the municipal court. We had a municipal court last Monday. We have one more municipal court before we are completely done with municipal courts. Our first circuit court date will be June 3rd, 2024, and they will be in the new courthouse at that time. We're working out some bugs. We do have some issues that we have to address at our next meeting with abolishing the ordinance for the municipal court and then basically having an ordinance stating that all of our forfeiture processes will go through the Washoe County Circuit Court. We do have some issues with bond amounts. We're going to be changing some of the bond amounts so we're kind of more uniform. That's coming up and we'll end up having issues to address with that with the next board meeting. Otherwise, just general patrol to complain. We've had some dog alert issues. I would really wish people would contact either us or the Sheriff's Department when dogs are loose. I understand there's a lot of complaints about dogs being loose, but if no one tells us, we don't know. So that would help if they would call those in. Matt's continuing to go to school. He's kind of about one-third done with his classes. So that's continuing well. We're looking at next month to get our annual firearms certification done out of the prison. They've been gracious enough to let us use their firearms field to complete our firearms training. The state is starting out with a new tactical or long rifle protocol. So we're going to be starting that in probably when we do our drills or firearms certification, either April or early May, incorporating using the long gun or the AR and incorporating transition from sidearm to the AR. We will be having some training coming up also with the prison as far as working with officers, with the DA's office too, as far as writing reports and getting them a little more comfortable with court testimony. I think some of them get a little scared when they go up to testify in court. It's their first time in court and they don't know what it's like. So I want to go out there and sit down with them and kind of explain to them what to expect. Procedures, policies, how everything kind of works out in the courtroom. So that's about it. Excellent. And just meetings galore as usual. Okay, let's move on to number three. Consider act on approval of purchasing a tent meter for the police department in the amount of $169. It's a two-piece meter that we can use to check the tent on vehicles. We can, with two pieces, some of them are cheap and they just have kind of a little slit and you can put them over like a rolled down window, but you can't go through like windshields or back windows. This is a two-piece where you can mount one, the receiver here and the transmitter here, and you can more or less put them together and then it'll determine the amount of light that falls between both the class and then it will determine the amount of tint so that we can enforce some tint issues. We have had the state patrol on a couple of stops. They have a tent meter. We have borrowed theirs and our troopers actually done the tent meter for us. So having our own, we can do that on our own now. So motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion passed. Number four, we took care of? Yes. So we want to act on that in April, right? Or do we want to act? Yeah. So we have some time to discuss it. Or do we want to discuss it now and act on it? Becky, did we get a bill for maintenance? Well, I kind of included with the contract. It's like $450. So I guess you'll have to decide whether you want to continue upholding that contract and stay with that contract and do the inspections. 
Because I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the inspection just basically makes sure it's all working. And then if there's any broken parts, that's in addition to the inspection. And we've gone through replacing uh, backup, the backup battery. And those are not cheap now because those are lithium. So those are quite expensive. Uh, we've had relay issues. I know one year it got hit by lightning. That was over $1,000 to fix. So um, I guess you'll have to determine if you want to continue maintaining it or if you just don't want to maintain it and let it go. Or if it works decently, there's the possibility take it down and, and put it on on, on uh, Wisconsin Surplus. Yeah. Maybe there's some place way up north they're looking for a used siren, get a couple bucks for it and then have it out of your ear, depending if you wanna don't want to keep keep it functioning anymore and get rid of it or so let it sit there. And... I really like that last suggestion. Yes, Becky. Um, according to their agreement, they charge four hundred and twenty five per site annual cost at 425 and then they have a total annual cost for the agreement. So you, it's either a one year agreement, three year or five year, and that's 450. So now we're up to what, 870? 800. 800 a year then, just to go check it out, and if it's broken, additional costs on top. Yeah, there's a whole list of what's covered and not covered. Yeah, from what, so, from what I understood from what he said, it's, you know, obviously everybody in Washera County still has theirs, and nobody has went away from it, but if they're saying, if, if you, like, I know you can't hear it out on Sandy Pines, and it, it's been hard yeah, to hear it don't hear it out here either. Like, what's your, your suggestion? What do you think? I think for the most part, for people in town here, there's enough cell phones, uh, they sign up for the code red, um, or whatever it's called now, code, code red stream or whatever, that you can get alerts on your cell phone, your laptop, your tablets. Uh, if it's on cable, you know, generally cable will put it through, local news channels will put it through. Uh, there's enough outlets out there. It's not that you're sitting out there with no information. Yeah. There's, there's the information there. And, just as far as bang for your buck, I, I think it would behoove and be just uh, better for the people in the village that, um, you know, just get rid of the siren and just have them rely on, on the different types of media to, to get their alerts. Uh, I know some people say, well, what about Pearl Lake Campground? Well, that's serviced by the town of Leon. You know, then they should have a siren out there to let people know where people are Pearl Lake. That, that's the town of Leon's responsibility to alert their citizens. So, um, you know, somebody questioned me about that, so that, that's not our responsibility as a town. No, we're just concerned with the village right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I think we just let it go, and then uh, we don't renew the contract, and if it just breaks, it breaks, and well, I like, or we can take it down. I really like Kyle's suggestion. You know, if some other communities are really trying to use it, it could be spare parts for somebody or a replacement or an add-on. You know, I say we do a motion to approve and remove it and try to, you know, make well, some funding off of it. Second. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to say how high up is it and who's going to remove it. <laughs> What's his name from water? He's, he doesn't mind climbing Around up. He climbs any. There we go. Well, we'll make arrangements to have it removed. Well, I mean, if you need a We have nothing. We have, well, we have to have a boom, some sort of a boom drive yeah, or something. So we can. That's on the wish list. Well, I'll bet you if you talk to Quimby. Quimby. You know how heavy is it? Because we only have like 300 pounds in the They're about that big around. We'll look at it. The, the big weight's on the uh, little base. So we're all in favor. Aye. Aye. All those opposed? I guess the motion passed. <clears throat> That's what we like. Okay, consider act on approval to quote RAP Technologies the amount of $3,649.27 for the taser system. Whoops. Back up one oh. more. Number five. See, I got my glasses on. The short range isn't working. Um, so this is Northland Business. Uh, I looked at this last year as far as transcription uh, software. Um, <clears throat> When I was looking at it last year, and I did put it in the budget, I budgeted eighteen hundred dollars. Um, they've come up with some different software that I like a little bit better, and I put the screws to the salesman, and I got him down to we well, was going to charge nine ninety five, and then the first year setup fee, and I got him to 
kick in the $50 per strip setup fee. So it's $995 for the transcription gear for an annual agreement. And what that does basically is it'll cut down a lot of time for us for transcribing tape statements. The new AI technology, and it's something that's learning as it's being worked, is we'll be able to do interviews with inmates and it'll automatically type it out for us. And then we still have to proof it and go through and proof things because it'll have some of their vernacular out there is not... It learns the slang. Yeah, it's slang. So we have to determine what the word is in slang and stuff. So we'll still have to have him go through it, but we won't take the hours to type. It should do... The one thing we did was like a one-page statement. It did it in three minutes. And you said this is... Probably ten minutes, maybe six, ten minutes of typing. And you said this discounts on a time frame, right? Yep, that he would offer it up to us. If I get back to him today, he'll keep the $995 price. Otherwise, he was going to go back up to the $1188, which is still even less than $1800 originally. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Thanks, Kyle, for working that discount. Anybody opposed? Motion passed. Good job, Kyle. I told him if he didn't hold the price, I was going to send you out to rough him up. Okay. Right the lawnmower out there. Alright, consider act on approval of court from quote from RAP Technologies in the amount of $3,649.27 for the well, Bolero system, not really a taser system. So what this is, is I had a video, we never got to a committee meeting to look at it, but it's it shoots out like a rope and then when you shoot it to the person, it, it's like a lasso. It lassos them in, and it's got two small probes, and it'll hook into their clothes, or it'll hook in the skin, but it's not real deep. Um, the thing they, we like about that is it's it's a non-pain compliance tool, so you're not using the pain of a taser or pain from spraying somebody with OC or using uh, baton strikes to get compliance. Um, it will wrap around either there's a there's a laser that comes out and it shoots uh, the rope out and the rope will wrap around. So basically, it'll wrap them up like this. Their arms will be wrapped with a rope and then they have limited movement. If they're running, we can wrap around their knees and their ankles and then they can't run until we release it. Uh, the nice thing that works about that is it it gets control of them. So we don't when we go hands on, we don't have to worry about hands, um, you know, where they're trying to grab weapons or fight us. Or if they're trying to run, uh, get them on the legs, get them down. We can also go to secondary with taser and then use taser if necessary. Generally, if you use the wrap, um, you'll get them down. You're able to get compliance, get them in handcuffs restraints before you cut the bolo wrap. Um, and we've had instances back when Carter was here, Carter deployed a taser on a guy with a direct shot right to his sternum, and the guy was on uh, PCP. Didn't, didn't phase him at all. He took the wires for the, the taser, bit him with his teeth, and kept ground fighting uh, Carter. So Carter was on the ground with this guy probably about eight minutes before he got any help from, um, well, I think City of Wacoma was the next closest car. So this way it would wrap him up, he'd get wrapped up, try to hook him up with, um, you know, cuffs. You know, we got two sets of cuffs, cuffs their ankles, cuffs their hands. So their mobility, their mobility is, is, is uh, decreased and then get assistance to get them in the car. Um, even puffy jackets, they wear these big puffy down jackets. The probes won't go through those and affect them. So uh, this is another tool that's coming out that a lot of departments are going to, um, especially people that uh, are emotionally disturbed or have mental health issues. We're not trying to use pain compliance to try to get them to uh, comply to us. It's it's a softer, gentler, I guess, way to gain compliance with people versus using, um, you know, taser or, or aggressive yeah, holds or burn. Uh, yeah, it's your batons, so. first line of, you know, personal uh, safety, so. Safety too. It's good I make the motion process. that we uh, purchase the items for the police department. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion passed. So that, that would be two, two bolos, um, the two <clears> machines. 
Um, 12 cartridges. 12 and the thing that the company does is if I send them my redacted report and I use a cartridge, they will replace the cartridge free of charge because they use our reports to build their base of um, nice. how we use them and what, what it was used for. Advertising. If we send them redacted video, they will give us a case of cartridges. <laughs> Both so that's why this next one is very important then, right? Yes. We will have to go to training on that. We're going to try the whole training here. Maybe we'll go home so we can all do it together in place at one Join. time. Um, so I'm going to try to get the shipping out of one too. I'll see if I can do that. Hey, I, I can get what I can get. Hey, 50 bucks is 50 bucks. All right, no, excellent. Is. Well, <laughs> we're going to move on to number seven. Discuss, consider, act on approval of purchasing body cameras using ARPA funds not to exceed the amount of 3000 And I believe this is, we need to pay for it first before we get it, right? So Kyle has that grant that's coming out already. Yeah. He's working on it. Well, that. and that's the thing with the wrap would actually be ARPA funds. Yep. Yeah. The grant, we're waiting for that to come out. We've applied for it. There, We got, we applied for $10,000. There's an in-kind. That I got whittled down to about three grand. I'm going to try to whittle that some more. Um, I think when I retire here, I'm going to be a car salesman. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to I'm going to try to whittle that down. But it's just kind of a safety net that we have there, um, because of our financial situation and you know our, our financial not status, but um, we don't have the money of like Green Bay or Oshkosh or whatever. That um, we have we have gotten a hardship grant for our vest where it's supposed to be a fifty percent grant. They've given us the whole amount because of hardship because we're economically disadvantaged. Yeah. So in the same thing, when they start pulling through this, start looking through our numbers and stuff, uh, we should be able to get a hardship on this, but it's not guaranteed. So I don't want to tell you, yeah, we're getting it, and we're not, but. Um, but we got the grant that covers it, and we, we pay for the we pay for them, then we get the money back. But we might have to use uh, about three thousand roughly in ARPA funds to pay for the total package when we order it. Yeah, and as we had discussed, you know, coming up on the quarry time, obviously with Wisconsin weather, we don't know what it's going to be like next month. So it could be eighties, it could be twenties with snow. But you know, getting those cameras ahead of time and you know, hoping for that reimbursement uh, would be a huge sick box or safety. Yeah, uh, with something made in the United States. Well, and we yeah. have, we have, the ones we have, um, mine's failed, so mine's, mine's six years old. That's about the life expectancy. We only paid 89 bucks for it, so that's gone. Um, but we're getting them now to where they're not, uh, Breeze is working good. I've got three more other ones that are working good, and I've got a small spy one that I might have you wearing up there this summer um, that, the, the on-off switch is kind of touchy, yeah. but uh, these will be full warm body cameras. It has redaction software in it, um, and we're going to end up storing the stuff on our own server so it's not in the cloud. So we have ability to access it anytime, and we don't have to worry like AT&T. Your phone's not working. I don't have to worry about that with the cloud. It's on my server. No one can get into it. No, nobody can monkey with it. So uh, the worst case, you just every couple of years, we buy a terabyte drive, download yeah. it, and so we're, yep, exactly. And, and a terabyte drive, the, the thing is when, with the body warm cameras, they want us to buy storage with them. Well, this year it's 1500, next year it's 2000. Yeah. 2026 at 3000, 2020, you know, five grand. And you can buy, like we can buy an eight terabyte for 600 some bucks from Jason. So we're working on getting that set up. Yeah. So we can store it ourselves and not have to. Cheaper in house. Yeah, so I would, I would make a motion to approve the purchase of the body cameras. Second. Yeah, but it's, yeah like I said, again, it's not going to be ARPA. That would be the um, RAP technologies. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Motion is for purchasing the body cameras. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then until we get reimbursed, they still pay for it anyway. Yep. So, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Sewer and water, Mark, monthly update. Uh, Glenn couldn't be here, so there's a sewer and water monthly update that he wrote. So, uh, it says that the consumer confidence report was filled out and ready to be sent out by the first quarter water bill. Mm -hmm. 
It's a formal report that shows the consumer of our safe water results and values of all samples taken in 2023. They were required to send this report to all customers once a year. Um, they've had issues of tree limbs falling on the fence on the water treatment plant, bending the top rails. The county came with a bucket truck to drop all the hanging limbs. Stephen and I hauled them away. After that, they have been brushing and chipping all around the fence at ground height. Also fell all dead trees as well. Um, they'll have it all cleared out. <coughs> They're straightened and reattached the chain link fence, top rails, and barbed wire. Um, for the winter months, the south ditch with affluent um, was cleaned out. They're now draining it out and running it back through the system pr to prevent algae and duckweed growth through the summer months. They also get ready for sable mechanical. They have the salt ditch aerator coupling and gearbox done. Oh, They're waiting for spring to install. The ditch being empty and dried out is not a necessity, but it's helpful. And last week they started treatment for root killing and some of the manholes that roots have started to find their way through cracks. This summer they'll be looking into bringing out, uh, bringing an outside contractor to seal up some of the manholes. A couple of them have pinholes in them, which with the high water table results in some un unwanted inflow and infiltration. So that's the update for that. Um, number two, consider act on approval of the 2023 Consumer Confidence Data Report to be included in the first quarter utility bills on March 31st, 2024. I'll make a motion to approve. We have no violations. Mark second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passed. <coughs> Street sidewalk ditches monthly updates. Um, so this uh, this month we uh, we limbed all the trees that were in Pine River Street. Um, and the county come out with a bucket truck. They were hanging over Pine River Street. The sunrise they were hitting them with a van, you know, van trailers were hitting them and stuff. And uh, so they did a really good job. I think we hauled the single axle. I think we hauled 12 bowls of brush. So that's how much limbs we cut off in there. And it looks pretty good. Um, found a few trees that are dead that we took down. So it was a good thing that we did that. Um, uh, this last week we cleaned out uh, the building at, at Public Works that we're gonna. Um, just uh, that we're going to demo, and I uh, cut all the trees that's in the yard out of out of the uh, out of our uh, what we own. So we clear that all out, so we have room now for we can gravel some of that out, and we have room for our aggregate and topsoil and all that stuff. So they haven't spread all over the village, uh, pile here and a pile there. Um, we've been dis dismantling the ice skating rink um, as soon as all the ice is out. Then um, we'll take that tarp or the liner off, and rest off would be coming to grab the uh, warming shed, and uh, he's going to store it at his in his yard because we have no room for it. Um, I've been getting chip ceiling prices for this year. I put a thirty-five thousand dollar limit on uh, chip ceiling, trying to get caught up to all these roads that we did, that we see uh, crack filled. And usually when you crack them, you want to chip seal them right away. And uh, like I said before, chip sealing that gives it the road another wear surface and seals all the cracks. Um, tomorrow, the, boy, uh, the guys are going to go get materials for the planter boxes that we just discussed. And of course, you all know that the new, new, lawn, new lawnmower is here, which we discussed earlier in the machine. So, um, do you have in your packets the, the picture? Did you put the picture? <coughs> That's in Willow Park underneath that fire swing. We can keep the cars up, we can't keep them out with shovel. They dug a four foot hole underneath the fire swing and all the white sand that we hauled in there now is all mixed in with the, the uh -huh. sand. So they dug like a four foot diameter, I think it was about three feet deep they dug it. Did you see anybody coming in that video? We can't get it, no, we can't get out that far. So that's the kind of crap that you put up with that little salt. But keeping them out of the parks 
there at, at some plus the vehicles yeah. because there is no damage at all i have a feeling somebody was in there with a metal detector yeah that's metal detectors aren't allowed in the village parks with, without and it will hold for metal detector we've had this yeah same wow. similar thing yeah wow that they Good. looked over there um the ordinance says you can't unless the village approves and then they, they can dig it up but they have to fill all the holes back in and stuff I've just been saying no because a lot of times they'll dig them and just leave them like that. I don't know if that's the case, but um, did Brent look at the video? Yeah, he's, he, they can see, but he can't make all can't the videos. He can't make because it's too far away. Is it a kid or an adult? We can't tell. But they didn't see a car driving right before that or anything? Well, the cars can't go in there because we have a block. They have no block. So they walk and they probably walk, you know. Yeah, okay. They probably walked in from, they probably came across that bridge that mm -hmm. the residents have right there. And then, and that guy is really good because he tells me if somebody screws around there that he knows. So it wasn't him, that I know. Yeah, I don't see any other reason why they would. But that's yeah. a lot, about a hole to dig for. That's a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. for what reason? I, I can't believe that they, for a metal detector, that unless it was a big tire rim or something down there, they wanted it real bad. Yeah. Or, and we've had issues with it in the past. But that's a big hole. So I just thought I'd show you what we put up with it. That's why it was a real plus to shut shut down the park and I plan on opening April first, taking everything off. Do you want do you want red sand by any chance? Huh? Do you want red that's sand by any chance? I throw bags. Actually I want to eliminate all the sand because it's a good kitty litter box. Yeah. So that's why we changed it over in Vets Park and then we'll have to refresh it of course this year. And gradually, I want to get rid of all the sand. Okay. Because it's just, it's just you should see the stuff we find in there for the cats and what have you, coons, you know. So it's not very sanitary. So, but we'll fill it in. I just thought we'd show you, you know, the kind of stuff that goes on down there. So um, that's all I have for. Oh, uh, I've been uh, working with uh, Primark. I got all the. All the documents uh, signed. I had to go through the whole village and document all the culverts that we had, all the what size they are. Anything that's over 71 inches in diameter, that means that there's two of them together. That counts as one diameter. And uh, if it's over 71 inches, and then it's, that's considered a bridge. And if it's considered a bridge, then it has to be inspected. And I signed off for the county to, to do that to inspect it. Um, so far. We have one that might qualify for that, but uh, they have to inspect this bridge out here. But that's the DOT. They want they want that. They want to know what all of if there's any culverts over 71 inches diameter total that we have to have them inspected. Does that cost us anything when they inspect them? Yes. So well, 400 that. bucks. And how often do they got to inspect it? Uh, I don't know the answer to that question right now. That'd be a good thing to know just in case. I, I think it's every two years, but I, I don't quote me on that. <clears throat> and I think we just had it last year and I thought it was around four hundred dollars they charged us. Okay. To have them inspected. So so that was all submitted into the DOT and uh, so I'm waiting back to see if any of them did qualify as a bridge. And then also we're I think next month we'll be putting on um, Putting on uh, putting in for bids for that uh, bridge lane project for that's going to be totally reconstructed with our grant money that we received <coughs> two years ago. Okay. So that's what we're working on right now, and trying to get people to come out to give you estimates and stuff that's like pulling teeth, big time. And concrete went up this year; it's two hundred dollars a yard now. Because there's a concrete shortage, but you can get it at any time. <laughs> so you go figure. <laughs> and that's all I have. All right, we're going to move on to miscellaneous business and consider act on approval or reimbursement check to Dominic Russo in the amount of one seventy nine seventy five for twenty twenty three lottery credit. Yeah, what happened was is he um, paid his real estate taxes. And then he had talked to somebody from the county, and he was eligible for the credit. So he had already paid all his real estate, so this would be the refund of what he owed for the, his credit, his lottery credit. So the county reimbursing us to pay him? Or was this coming out of no, the grants? No, he paid us, so okay. he, we would have to just 
reverse in the latter. Uh, motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion passed. Number two, consider act on approval of operator's license for Jesse Mankowski, post office bar, effective March 19th, 2024 through June 30th, 2024. Anything on record? No. Motion to approve license. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passed. Number three, consider act on approval of dates of April 15th, 2024 for the open book via phone from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. and board of review date of May 2nd, 2024 from 6 to 8. Uh, who's going to be there besides me? I can be there. You know? Or we need at least two, two board members. I mean, I will be there. I could possibly be there too. I'm on active duty that week. Well, depending on the election. True. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Come on. All right. Motion to approve. Second. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Who second? Sorry, Alan. Consider act on approving the public test of election equipment on Monday, March twenty-fifth, twenty twenty-four, at nine thirty a.m. We we had yeah, that has done. So motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passed. Six, consider act on approval of the following people for election workers. You skip five. Uh, I skip five. Yeah. Consider act on moving village board meetings from the third Monday of the month to the third Tuesday of the month at six o'clock starting in April 2024. That's going to be a problem for Dylan because if he gets elected, those are county board meetings. On the second, second Tuesday. Uh, it doesn't matter if he gets elected to county board, he can't be on a village board. Yeah. So let's move. Yeah, he can. Conflict yes, of he interest. Can. He, can. he can. Oh. He can be on the. He can be on board. He, he can absolutely do it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Ever said was on the Spring Springwater County Board. He was also on the County Board. Yeah. Yeah, and the County oh, Board meets on the second Tuesday. Yeah, it meets on the second Tuesday. I think you guys are getting ahead of yourself. That's mm -hmm. yeah. Well, some people got confidence. You're gonna make it. That's okay. Uh, do we want to table that one until next month? Oh, uh, that would be your meeting. <laughs> yeah, they can start it in May then. Yeah. Okay, we'll table until next month. I think with the possibility of new board members coming on next month, I think it would be better if we wait for them to be on anyways in order to get their opinion as well. All right. We'll and I would say at 6 o'clock, you don't even have residents home from work in order to attend the meeting. I can't well, just something to bear in mind. Last year we had a little bit of an issue because the board did not take place in their new positions until Tuesday. And if we wouldn't have had a full board on Monday, you would not have had a quorum. Yep. So you maybe want to Think of it in those terms if you run into an issue. That's when Dylan came on last year for us yeah. at the last minute. Otherwise, we would not have had a quorum and you wouldn't have had no, a board okay. on this Tuesday is an open night. forum for you. Um, it was always on Tuesdays anyway. Yeah. As far as I can remember back, it was always Tuesdays. Right. So they made a change for some other reason, but reason of convenience. So that is, people so, could go to the county board meetings. Yeah, I think what Linda just said too is if we move it to Tuesday in April, we have a chance of not having a full board, correct? Dependent. That's what would have happened last year. Yeah. It's a freak thing, but it would have happened last year if we wouldn't have got you on a Monday night. So, so stuff you happens. would not have had just, a board on Tuesday. That, let's, okay, let's, we'll table it till next month. Yeah. It'll be brought up. And then we'll be able to give others an opportunity to just, you know, say their... That'll be after the election. Yeah. May, may I advise maybe not 6 p.m., 6.30, because I can't be here at 6, because I close. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I think that's a good one. should go back to seven then. We have to have the village have a meeting. Whether it's inconvenient for one person or not, you have to have a standard. Right. He's playing this game just that one person can't meet it, another person can't meet it. It's too bad. Either you're on the board to serve as the board, or you're not. Well, I don't think anybody was arguing that. So we'll table until April meeting and make a decision then. 
Okay, move on to number six. Did you vote Consider on that? act on approval. Did you vote on that to table it? No. Oh, you have to vote on it. Motion to table till April. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Motion passed. Number six, consider act on approval of the following people for election workers. Carol Thompson, Roxy Anderson, Gary Rodenzo, Bobby Erdman, Barbara Phelps, Mary Costopoulos, Ken DeBow, Edward Delgado. Hope I pronounced that name right. So is, do we have to yeah, do bad? Is there anything that we have to do for them or just approve them or they've already been vetted? So motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All passed. Items to be placed on next regular board meeting agenda. Jimmy, got anything before we end it or at the last step? No, I think, I think uh, we should be okay until I get back. Uh, so I'm going to cut off here. Thanks for everybody's help. Thanks for the good job, everybody. And I will talk to you all when I get back. Thanks for not getting in an accident. Thank you. Win us big money. <laughs> what do you say? Bring us some money, buddy. Good night, Jim. All right, anybody got anything else to be placed on the agenda for the next meeting? We have five things from this meeting. An ordinance regarding moving to circuit court and discontinuing municipal court. We need an ordinance or a set of rules for the community gardens. I'd like to do that at the ordinance meeting on April 9th because then I can start Advertising it so we can Perfect. get some people signed up. So we need the garden. We're going to need the garden. Put that on the April 9th one. Okay. And we had both three and four that are presently under parks. Yeah, the Frisbee Golf. Frisbee Golf and placement of a camera at the quarry. And the fifth one is now <coughs> village board meeting time and date. What about the siren? Don't, we already voted on that. Oh, okay. We took it out. We approved it. Make Jim climb the post. <laughs> Let me know so I can video. Huh? I'll video. You'll be too busy that day. <laughs> Most likely. <laughs> I won't be. No. Thanks. <laughs> Anybody got anything else? Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Passed. Wonderful. <laughs>